Hey guys, welcome to programming knowledge. In this video, we will be talking about logical operators. In the previous video, we wrote a program to validate the age the user enters, right? So we are giving a condition like uh, if it's check whether it's a positive number or not. And if it's a positive number, we were again checking whether it's too great or not. If it was too great, uh, we were telling something like uh, your age is not valid. And uh, if it was okay, if it was in the range, then we were checking whether he's 18 years or younger. Um, we were considering that the age was valid. Or else we were telling that it was a not valid age, right? Here, if you observe, this condition and this condition go together. So if a number is positive and if a number is too great, then it's not a valid number. Or if you look at the larger scope, here you can combine these three two statements. If a number is positive and it's too great, or if a number is negative, then it's not valid age. Uh, or else it's going to be valid. So the way you group these conditions are by using logical operators. They're, these are just like the con connecting words are used in the English statement. So here, if I talk about the condition when the age is not going to be valid. Let me write it down here. A number is a valid age or a number is not a valid age if it is positive and if it is too great or the number is negative. So this was the condition, right? So if a number is positive and too great, so these two conditions go together or the number is negative then the age is not valid. So this was the condition. If you write it down in this manner, it is much easier to write it down than these group of nested if and else statements. So the way to achieve these things, to, to validate these conditions and to join the result of these two conditions, these results are joined, right? You need to check whether the number is positive and whether it's too great and you need to combine these two results and you are going to get a result. Also, you are going to check whether the number is negative or not. What if it's not positive? You need to check whether it's negative or not. And then you are going to check these two conditions. If one of them is true, then you are going to say it is not valid. So this is basically the function of logical operators. So there are three logical operators in C++ or in any language. These are same as the logical gates in physics. You might have come across it. So these are and you have an or and a not. So not symbol you might have guessed it while I was talking about the relational operators. I was talking about this operator, right? So this one stands for not equal to. So this exclamation stands for the not. So this is not and for or you are going to put two vertical bars which you, which you will see on, on top of the enter key. And here for and you have two ampersands. The very important point to note here is that you need to use two ampersand symbols for AND and two vertical bars for OR because a single version also exists. So in C++, there is also an uh, operator which is this one, which is a single AND and a single OR. So these are actually bitwise operators. We need not dig deep into these operators because they uh, deal with a binary representation of the data. But just for your information, I'm telling these things. We will talk about that in a later video. For now, we don't need these bitwise operators or bit manipulators. We are only going to need the logical operators, which are just going to tell the relation between two conditions. So and is basically if two or any con any number of condition, if all are true, then the result is true. So and is basically uh, if all the conditions are true, then it's going to be true. And for or you have if any one of the condition is true, right? If any one of the condition is true, then the result is going to be true. That is the specialty of or. So if, if you have n number of conditions, even if one condition validates to true, then the result is going to be true. And for and, if n number of conditions are there, all n number of conditions should be satisfied, then only you are going to get the true value or else you are going to get false. So 
this is the basically the and and our operator not is just it's going to turn the value so not is uh, it is going to uh, change true to false and vice versa so the function of not is just to change true to false and false to true or checks n number of conditions and uh, if any one of the condition is true then the result is true and for and it is going to check all n number of conditions and if any one of them is false then the result is false every condition should be true then only and is going to give you a true so that is basically the logical operators so here another thing is that if you are writing a logical operator let's say some uh, condition 1 and condition 2 that's how you represent and for or it is the same thing if condition 1 or condition 2 and not basically doesn't need two conditions just going to reverse the condition so first you put an exclamation mark and you put the condition so here if you are using an and operator if this condition evaluates to true this first condition then only it's going to check the second condition so even if the second condition is true if the first condition is false it is not going to check the second condition at all it is not going to perform anything over here so the thing with or is it is going to check every every condition and uh, here if this one is true it is not going to check other conditions so the condition for or is that if any one of them is true right so you, if it forms any one of the condition is true then it's going to evaluate it as true and this whole condition becomes a true condition so this part is going to be executed that is with the or so those are the condi uh, those are the logical operators let's take a quick example we are going to deal with the same example we took yesterday so here i'm directly going to take the age so enter your age and uh, i'm going to take that inside a variable so int age c in age and here i'm going to validate the age so if if age is greater than 0 and age is greater than 102 right so this was the condition we gave yesterday or 101 something like that so let's stick with 102 now and if this condition if this age is greater than 0 and the age is greater than 102 so this condition is basically not required because if it is greater than 0 then only it's going to be greater than 102 right so i'm just going to take out this particular condition so if the age is greater than 102 or if the age is less than 0 right so if an age is greater than 100 something like 101 102 something like that or if the age is less than 0 what we are going to say you have not entered uh, a valid age right and or else we are just going to perform the check so if age is greater than or equal to 18 we are just ah let me tell you over here i forgot yesterday we were talking about the block right so here if you have only one statement to execute then you know need not use a block so here i have only one statement to execute this is going to be the same thing as uh, this one here if i put a block inside this and then put a c out statement it's going to be the same thing but block is generally used to hold two or more statements if I'm going to use only one statement, I don't need a block. So I can just directly put the statement beside the if condition itself. So this is also valid. But if you write any other statement over here, so let's say statement 2, if I write something over here, this is actually not considered a part of this if statement unless and until I have a block, something like this. So here inside this block, whatever I write inside this block, all the statements belong to this else statement. But here, since I have not put a block over here, this particular statement goes to the if. This statement stays to the else part only, unless and until I specify another block and mention these two things over here. So if I put these two things over here, now these two have become a part of this if statement, and this whole if statement becomes a part of the else statement. And here, I have put only one statement, that is why I don't need a block. And here, if an age is greater than or equal to 18, I am going to say that uh, you are eligible. So whatever, what, oh, el eligible to vote, something like that. 
or else we are going to say uh, sorry you are not eligible something like that so this is the program we have written this is going to do the same thing which we had done in the previous video but see how small the program now looks so if you consider taking out these braces then it's going to look much much smaller because uh, you have only one statement executed inside the if block but uh, because you uh, many people tend to forget putting these braces for multiple statements also it is always advisable to put the braces for even one condition but generally i don't do that i just if there is only one condition i put it beside the condition itself sorry one statement execute i put it beside the condition itself it's up to you either way it's going to work so the here now let us execute it we are going to get the same output so here it's going to ask for the age so enter your age let's say 12 so here it says sorry you are not eligible and that's it we have created the same program but here it's a much smaller program than the previous program so that's all for this video in the next video we will be talking about switch case statements